Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about Power Automate Flows from Power BI. Now this new feature was introduced on April 15th, and it has the flexibility to go ahead and both create and trigger your flows directly from the Power BI report. So in this video, I'll walk you through the process of how that works, and I'll show you some of those intricate details that you need to be aware of. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. What you have over here is my Power BI report, and you must have actually seen me use this Power BI report on all the other visualizations and the Power BI integrations that I've done. In fact, I put those videos down over here because I showed the one about how I went ahead and built this and just all the examples. So I just thought I'll continue with something I have because at the end of the day, that's the real world perspective, right? Because you want to add on to something. Other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to first on click edit it, but I'm intentionally going to go ahead and actually put this in a different page because in a different page is where I'll be able to focus just on that new visualization. But whatever you do over here, you can actually go ahead and do the same information over here as well. Okay. So go to page number back two. And now the first thing you want to do is add that visualization. Now, to, if this is the first time that you're doing it in your visualization, you click on that ellipses over here and you click on get more visuals. When you click on get more visuals, right in the search, you go ahead and search for power automate and you hit enter and there you go it shows up so you go ahead and click on add if it wants any approval just go through that process but after all said and done it shows up over here as your new visualization for power automate so i'm going to click on it and now here is the very nice instruction of a four-step process easy to understand shows up over here and so the first thing is just just follow along with that so the first one is add data what that means is that it's referring to all the existing data tables that you've set up and it takes into account any relationships that you've set up over there, all other stuff. What you need to do is two things. First, make sure that your Power Automate visualization has been selected. And then you come over here and select whichever fields that you want. Because it's important that you select you know, the fields that you want because only those ones will go ahead and be available in your Power Automate flow. So my always recommendation is you know, rather select more than less. Because once you've got through the process and you started it, you know, you'll have to come back and restart the process. So I always you know, say that you'd rather do more than less over here. So I'll go in and I'll select the student name. I want to make sure I've got the test, the test date, and the test score. So I've got these four important fields selected. So we've taken care of step number one. Let's go to step number two, and it says set up your flow. And for that, it says go ahead and select the edit in the more options. And so that's why it's here, edit. I mean, more options, the ellipsis, and I click on edit. And this is what really got me. This, this for me was my big wow factor, because right inside that Power BI report, this little window opens up to me go, for me to go ahead and create the Power Automate. And it's so neat because right, right off the bat, you already got four templates that you can reference over here. Interesting thing about this one right here is that this shows this little segment of all the flows that you've directly tied into Power Automate. It says, flows, Power Automate, time-consuming tasks without leaving Power BI. So this is the only section. In fact, this is also the only place where you will see this because outside when I go into flow or Power Automate, you don't see this visualization of this effect over here, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So for the sake of this example, I'm actually going to go ahead and use this template. But if you want to build something from scratch, that's simple. You come and click on the plus new, and over here you've got the two options. It's to template, which is the same as these ones, or you can click on instant cloud flow. So I'm going to go ahead and now select this one. So when I click on it, this process is simple, and you've already seen this before. The same concept in Power Automate as you've seen before. You've gone ahead and created a template. It goes ahead and makes sure that the connections are there. You're validated, and then you click on Continue. Again, this all look and feel is very simple and very you know familiar. You should all be familiar with that. So the first trigger step is already taken care of by Flow for you, and it says on Power button click, or Power BI button click. So you don't have to do anything over there. This is where we start going ahead and putting some entry ourselves. So my concept is that anytime there is something happening in the Power BI report, some data has been filtered or some data that you want from there, based on that one button click, I want to go ahead and take that data and put it into SharePoint list. And this is a sweet process because now and even you have reports showing on Power BI and you've gone ahead and done some filtering to you know, filter those tables over there. You want a certain piece of data and it's data information at that specific time span. You want to go and copy that somewhere. And in the past, I had to actually go ahead and add a Power Apps and put a, just a button over there. You click on the button and the button would actually trigger a flow. So I had to put this one-step process of involving Power Apps. 
Now I don't need to do that. I can do it directly with Power Automate and use Power Automate directly inside Power BI. So that's what I'm gonna do in this scenario. So let me go ahead and now select my SharePoint lists, uh, my site and the SharePoint list, and we'll start um, you know, making some flow over here. So my is the test score. I just wanna make sure, the test site test score. And then in here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll get this information. So let's actually spend a few, min few minutes over here. By default, the Power BI already goes ahead and says, hey, here's the user ID who has triggered the flow. It's very important that you read that. Again, username who has triggered the flow, user email. So it gives you all that really vital information of who was the person who actually triggered the flow. And the trigger the flow is completely separate from who actually go ahead, go ahead and build the flow, which is me. Just trigger the flow, person who came to the uh, report and click on the button that we're going to create. But then all those four fields that we select, they all have this Power BI data prefix over there. So that's important for you to notice that it's not something, it's not a wrong field or, oh, I can't find my fields. Your fields are still there, which is the student name, test, test date, test score. They're all still there. You just have that Power BI um, prefix, Power BI data. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and map the data, student name, Power BI student name, goes and does the automatic apply to each, which makes sense because I'll be pulling in more data and I want all of those data, uh, the rows that are coming in from the Power BI added as items in the SharePoint list. So it, it really makes sense how Power Automate automatically went and did that for us, makes it easier for us, less mistakes for us as a user. All right, so then I wanna go ahead and put in the category. So I just gonna make sure I got all the scrolling stuff correct. The category is actually just the test. And then I also want to go ahead and get the score. So the score is a test score. And I think I'm good over here. Cool. So I'm, now, next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and now put this into a uh, um, variable and then send all this information to me as an email as well. So to do that, I'm going to do it something very simple. I'll come back over here to the next step. And I'll just create a simple search for a variable. And in the variable, I'm gonna go ahead and initialize the variable. I'll call this as a string type, and I'll just say test score bar. That's good. Inside the apply to each, right after the create item, I can go ahead and now call the variables again. Inside the variable, I'll say now go ahead and append to a string variable. Select the variable that I created. And in here, I can just go ahead and make sure I get those three things, which is the test person, the test um, name, and the score. So that's right. it is. I want to get the student name. I'll put space, pipe, I'll put the test itself, space, pipe, and then I'll get the actual test um, score. So right there. So once it goes and does all the appending and, and um, gets the variable set up, I just want to send that to me as an email. So I'll go ahead and now do that as Outlook. And in the Outlook, I'll say that's the one, and I'm going to send it as an email. In the email, I'll intentionally go ahead and type in whoever's person I want. So I'll go ahead and say, this needs to come to me. That's perfect. And says today's uh, list of test information, test scores other scores. And then here, I'll just go ahead and drop my uh, variable. So I intentionally went and did that from that one button, I can go ahead and save the data and send a notification. Very sweet, but at the same time, so simple and so powerful. So I'll just make sure I get some space over here. That way I can always recognize which one's which, All right? Now, now that I've done building the flow piece, this is where you gotta get yourself a little familiar because if you've just been working on Power BI, the first thing you're gonna do is come up over here and click on save, then you might go back to the report and you've lost all your work. So get, get used to that, okay? What you wanna do now is save the Power Automate work, the flow that you created. And to do that, you come and click on save. So I'm clicking on the save, it is going ahead and saving, and you can see it's saving, and the moment that finishes, next, don't click on the back to report, don't, don't do that yet. You come over here and click on the left arrow. In the left arrow, there's one more step that needs to be done, and that is the apply. That's the final step, and you know what it says, it says you successfully applied the flow name to your button. And so I say, well, what button is this, Daniel? Now, <laughs> you can go ahead and click on back to report, when you click on back to report, voila, there's the button that you want. So remember that little visualization, which was the flow that we started over there, the power automate one, that automatically became a button. And so in the button, now you can go ahead and resize the button. You can go ahead and you know relocate it and you can you know do some fun thing. And I just, just to show on that, this is where I, was, I got excited about some of the advanced settings features over here. I could go ahead and change the button. It says in a click to run flow, I was able to change the text. I can now oh, go back over here, I can come back in, and I can even do some of the 
uh, fill colors. I can go and change that to you know something more fancier or different colors that I want. All of those properties, functionalities that come by default into Power BI, especially visualizations, these those fell into effect over here in the text as well. So I was really happy about that because it makes the overall functionality a lot easier. So that was the simple piece over here. Now, if I just as a test, if I go ahead and now want to do a run, um, we'll just test to see if the flow runs. So since I'm still in the edit mode, if I just hold my shift button down and if I click on that, it will do two things. It's just triggering. It's just the first time it's going and triggering the power automate flow. And then if everything goes well, it'll come back and tell me trigger. That's what it does. And then it immediately switches back to that new text that you have. So you've got that little time gap over there from the triggering trigger and then come back to that original place over there. So the good thing is that right in that button, it will give you information where Hey, everything is good on the back end. Now it has run successfully because if it hasn't, there's going to be an error that shows up right there. So I love that button functionality because it comes with a lot of it. Now you probably already saw my email notification come through. That was part of the flow, but let's go and take a look at the flow itself. All right. So I come over here now and then voila, I get all this information. So Daniel, what is this information? Well, let's go take a look. But the way the flow worked is that in the button, I went ahead and captured all this information because that was the information already there. My uh, uh, flow went ahead and grabbed all of this data that is coming in from my table and then it went ahead and sent that to me information as an email. Well, it also went ahead and uploaded my SharePoint list, which is great, and it sent me an email notification. So I come over here, I go and take a look at that, and here's my email notification that has come in directly from Power Automate. So two things we accomplished. Just from that triggering the button directly inside Power BI, um, it went ahead and triggered off the flow, and I was able to accomplish these two important things over here. So we were able to go and create that successfully without any options. And now we got to go ahead and also see how do I share this with others? Because if you remember, there were actually four steps involved over there and we got done up to step number um, uh, three. But the, the last step was we need to share this with somebody else. So that's the step now we're going to work on. So in order to do that, first you come into your Power Automate and you go in and refresh it. And the important thing that you need to know is that right now, as we stand right now, this feature will automatically create that flow in your default environment. You don't have an option to select in an, an, another environment, like you know how in Power Apps when you're creating the apps directly inside Power BI, it gives you that one option, which environment you want it to. That is not currently available in Power Automate. The product group is aware of that and they are planning on putting this as a future release. No timeline has been mentioned exactly. But all said and done, here we are. The flow is created. It automatically went ahead and put in the Power BI icon for us because that just makes sense. It's getting triggered from there. And here's all the information. So now when I go and click on edit, this is where we take care of the sharing. Okay, so when I go in the sharing piece, I gotta come in over here. And actually, I went one step behind. I wanna get out of that. I'm not editing the flow. I just wanna get into the flow. And there you go. It shows me the connection, shows me the owners. Now, who are the run only users? Well, this is where I gotta share the flow with and it's important that you understand this because just going ahead and creating that flow and adding a button in doesn't give all the people access to run that it will go ahead and only you know present it but it doesn't give you access and I'll prove that to you watch this I've actually got another user this user is um, Rosanna who's my wife she has the access to the report she's got access to the data because she's able to see it now if I go ahead and hit refresh just to make sure everything is good and if I go into that page number two, she sees the button, but check this out. If I go and click on it, it says triggering unsuccessful. Well, what happened? Well, it happened because the flow wasn't shared with her yet. So that's why I was telling you how that button is so important. This button over here, it's a really powerful functionality because it's not just a UI interface just to go and click it. It gives you information to what is going on in the back end. And this unsuccessful was very neat. Well, let's go and fix that problem, right? The problem was pretty simple. The user just doesn't allow to run it. So I'm gonna go and change that. I'm gonna click on edit. When I click on edit, I'm going to go ahead and I'm select Rosanna. And when I select Rosanna, there it is. And now, just to take a quick look, this is currently shared with the user. And right now, I don't have the flexibility to go ahead and select another connection for the user. The user cannot use his or her own connection. But it's also important to know that these connections are only available to the users for their run-only features and that they do not have access to these connections outside this flow, right? It's very safe, it's very secure, but it is still tied to that one user, the creator, which is Daniel Christian, in this case is the owner. 
Okay, so we've gone ahead and now given Rosanna access to this, which is good. Now, if we go and run it again, it should run. So let's go and test it. Go back over here to our Power Automate. In fact, I gotta go back as Rosanna. So I click on here. I right, go back, come back over here, new button. Now when I go and click on it, it is triggering. It has triggered successfully. Wow, I like that check mark over here. The other thing is, when I go in and I take a look at the email, two things happen. First of all, that flow has been shared with you. So it gives me that notification, but that is flow doing it. And it'll also go ahead and send me another email of all that look at, you know, the one that went ahead and submitted that the data, that users, Rosanna will be the one getting that email any second. Second thing which happens is that it will also go ahead and update that SharePoint list. So let's go and take a look at that SharePoint list. And here you go. Here you see few, a uh, few seconds ago, and a few seconds ago, that's where the new one, which was triggered by Rosanna, my wife. Now, if you look at it, it was still created by Daniel because the flow was created by me. So keep this in mind. Again, it's not a problem because at the end of the day, it is the data that's being saved, but just keep this in mind that this was what was happening over here, okay? Um, what I did again in this example was I went ahead and created that um, button over here. I just kind of walk you through it but you can create this exact same button in the page where the data is available so you're able to go see it. And as an example, if I just now, I'm still in the edit mode over here. If I went and click that, it'll go ahead and add this and then I can go through the exact same process of how I created. Um, I just wanted to show it to you separately so that you can actually see the full effect. All right, so we've gone ahead and successfully added the flow or this new Power Automate visualization. We went ahead and made sure we shared it with the other one. Well, how do you go ahead and now delete this visualization and what is the process involved over here? So it's a, it's a two-step process because, and I say two-step because when I come over here now, if I were to go ahead and delete it, like actually remove it, yes, it goes ahead and removes it, but if I go back to the Power Automate and right there, and if I click on Refresh, it doesn't delete it at all. So it's still there. So remember that once you've gone ahead and created the flow from the Power BI side, uh, Power BI still has that connection and the relationship to trigger the flow and everything, but it doesn't have that full connection to even delete it or remove it. If you want to remove it, you take off the visualization from the Power BI, you come into the Power Automate, and you go ahead and delete that over here. So that's what I'm going to do. I go ahead over here and click on Delete. But I want to stop before I do that and show you this one other thing. All right, so what if I come back now to my Power BI? Let's come back to the same scenario. I click over here and I've gone ahead and selected some of my data. That's all good. You know, selected anything. Come over here to the ellipsis. And if I go ahead and now click on edit, it opens up in the Power Automate. Remember, this is the one thing where I cannot see the screen, but here something happens. It shows you the existing Power Automate flows that are there. Doesn't give me a whole lot of information of where it is tied to, but here's an important thing that I figured out while I was testing, is that now if I went to the same uh, you know, report, same type of data stores, if I go and create a secondary flow, the latest flow, which is the one that I'm creating, that's the one that will go ahead and take control the other flows do not you know, trigger. So it, it, it's helpful because if for whatever reason I went ahead and created this and I didn't have a good naming convention where I don't know which one's tied to that one here. If I added another flow, a flow, I'd get a little confused because I was two flows running over there. But in this case, that's not the one. The latest or the newest flow that you've created, that's the one that always dictates whether it's gonna run. So if I add another one, the other one's not gonna run. Test it, I've already tested and it works. Anyway, so I wanted to kind of prove that over to you, all right? So I can also go ahead and now delete the flow directly from here. So I come in, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. Yes, it will go ahead and delete it. I'll go ahead and say delete. Goes through the deleting process. It's deleted over here, just to make sure I come back into the actual flow piece. I refresh it, and it successfully deletes it from here as well. Very successful, goes ahead and takes care of the whole thing. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. I kind of walked you through the entire process and focused on those key features that you need to be aware of. Remember, this is the first time it just came out, so they'll add more improvements to it, specifically the one about flexibility to imp uh, select more environments, not just the default environment. But other than that, this thing is really sweet, it's really powerful, and I highly recommend that you start playing with it. And as always, keep power automating. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, Click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.